key principle of astrophotography image processing is that a pixel can only hold a certain amount of brightness and color. We are going to explain this using these two glasses. Imagine that the glasses represent the color and lightness content of a pixel. What happens if we pour some of the water into the glass containing the orange liquid? The color is diluted and becomes less intense. The same thing happens in the images we process. If we increase the lightness, the color saturation decreases. But if we make the pixel darker, the color becomes more intense. In other words, the lightness content of a pixel determines its color saturation. But what happens if the lightness image is much brighter than the color image? If we increase the brightness, we gradually fill the color glass. But eventually, the glass cannot hold any more liquid. If we carry on increasing the brightness of the color image, the liquid starts to overflow. Just like a glass, a pixel can only hold a certain amount of brightness and color. A pixel cannot hold such a high color saturation and such a high lightness at the same time. Let's look at two examples. What happens when we take this RGB image and add this H-alpha image as the lightness channel? The glass has overflowed because the pixels in the color image cannot contain the high color saturation at the same time as the high lightness. As a result, the red turns pink and the red channel is completely saturated in the lighter areas. The same thing happens in this example. If we insert this luminance image in the lightness component of the color image, the result looks fine at first glance. But if we compress the dynamic range, we get artifacts in the lighter areas. These are the result of the pixels in the lighter areas being overloaded. Understanding this principle is key to preserving the balance in our images and providing an accurate depiction of the objects we photograph. The first step to mastering this is learning the LRGB composition technique because it is based on the relationship between the color and brightness elements of the image. We can split any color image into a color component called chrominance and a brightness component. In perceptual color spaces, which are designed to emulate our own visual perception, we call this brightness component lightness. The aim of LRGB composition is to replace the lightness component with one of higher quality. We do this because the human eye can see much more detail in the lightness component of an image than in the color component. To replace the lightness component, we take a separate exposure with a filter that will give us a better signal-to-noise ratio in the objects. We usually use a luminance filter, which has triple the bandwidth of the RGB filters because it includes the whole visible spectrum. In this way, we get three times as much signal with the same exposure time, and this gives us much more detailed brightness information. What we're going to do is replace the original brightness data in the image with data of higher quality. This will give us a more detailed color image. We'll do this using a perceptual color space, replacing the original lightness with this higher quality image. The primary aim of LRGB composition is to improve our visual perception of an image. This means two things. The first is that we need to use perceptual color spaces because they are the ones that simulate human vision. The second is that we need to delinearize the luminance and RGB images separately before composing them. In this video, we're going to look at the processing steps for the two images in the linear stage. In the next video, we'll look at the LRGB composition itself and how we process the image once it has been delinearized.
When we do an LRGB composition, we always start with four images, the luminance image and the three primary color images. The first thing we need to do is create the color image using channel combination. We select the RGB color space and click and drag each image to the corresponding channel. Then we click on Apply Global to create a new image. Here we have the color image. We're going to rename it RGB. As you can see, it's a linear image, so it looks almost completely black except for the centers of the stars. We're going to use the Screen Transfer function to display it on the screen. We click on the Auto Stretch button. Now we can see the image, but it is not displayed correctly. This will always happen because the sky background can take on a completely random color, which is determined by various factors, from the equipment used to the conditions at the time the image was taken. If we look at the histogram, we can see that in this case the image is displayed like this because the sky background peaks are not aligned. The sky background is much darker in the blue channel, and the result is a completely yellow sky background that impacts all the objects in the image. To display a linear image correctly before calibrating the color, we need to unlink the RGB channels in the STF and reapply the auto stretch. By unlinking the channels, a different stretch is applied to each primary color channel, neutralizing the dominant overall color. Now we no longer need the individual primary color images, so we can iconize them. From now on, we'll work with these two images. The key to LRGB composition is to ensure that the two images are in the best possible condition before we try to combine them. The first process that we need to apply to both images is the gradient correction. They both have a radial gradient toward two corners, which are lighter than the center. We can correct this with gradient correction. As we have a radial gradient, we're going to use a simplified model with a degree of 2 to try to correct a parabola-shaped gradient, and we're going to enable automatic convergence, too. We'll leave structure protection disabled for the moment. It's always best to start with a color image because that's the one that contains the gradient's color and brightness information, so it's easier to analyze the results. Gradient correction has worked really well with these settings. As the luminance image has similar gradients, we're going to apply gradient correction to it with the same settings. We don't need to apply any more processes to the luminance image before we delinearize it, so now we're going to focus on the color image. The next step is the color calibration. We'll do this with SPCC. First, we configure the quantum efficiency curve, then the filters, and then we select an image area for the sky background reference. Finally, we press Control and click and drag the view selector of the background preview to the region of interest section of the SPCC window. And now we apply SPCC. The graphs show that although there are not many reference stars in this field, they follow a clear linear trend. This means that the color calibration is very accurate. Whenever we calibrate the color, we will encounter the same problem, and that's that the image brightness will change and we'll need to reapply the auto stretch. It's very important to remember to link the RGB channels again after the color calibration. Now we apply the auto stretch, and the colors are exactly how we've calibrated them. But if we unlink the RGB channels and reapply the auto stretch, we will completely destroy the calibration we've just done. So this option must always be enabled after the color calibration. Now both images are ready to be delinearized, and we'll do this in the next video.